Now, Kanye West has announced he's running for president. Ooh. Y'all ready for that? On the 4th mm-hmm. of July, the unpredictable artist tweeted, We must realize the promise of America by trusting God, unifying our vision, and building our future. West tweeted with the hashtag 2020 vision. I'm running for president of the United States. Uh, I kind of hate we were covering this story, but we got to do it because yeah, people are talking sure. about it, man. Uh, now, it's despite news. his tweet, the deadline to file uh, as an independent has passed in six states, and the deadline in seven other states are fastly approaching. Uh, with just four months until voters will head to the polls, Kanye hasn't appeared to register with the Federal Election Commission, though there is no official deadline to do so. So, should there be a higher criteria to run? We know you got to be at least 35 years of age, right? Right, right, yeah. right. You got to be a citizen, all that. But mm-hmm. should you be of higher standards? <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- we clearly have made a mockery out of what it means to be the leader of the free world. We are mm-hmm. living in that Mike Judge movie, Idiocracy Times Two. Mm. Any person with no political background shouldn't just say, I'm going to run for president. And because right. they're rich, have the f- uh, the means to do so. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, this is just a mockery of, 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 of our democracy like no uh. other. And yeah. I'm trying not to pay attention to it, guys, because <laughs> if you don't know, I am a atheist. I do not follow the teachings of Jesus. Wow. So, right. Now, you know, some say it. Kanye uh-uh. is trying to split the black vote. So what do you guys think about that? I say that Kanye is trying to promote his uh, new album. That's what <laughs> yes. I'm saying. He got That's new how you music. Feel about yeah. it. That's how I feel about uh, look, it. I don't know if he would have enough votes to split it, but it would definitely be a distraction. Look, if we're trying to make big moves this year yeah. for the new for president, the new one, you hear me saying that? Yeah. Uh, we can't have this going on for people actually considering doing that. Mm. Well, here's my question to you all. Like, here, I, I don't know. What does Elon Musk have to do with any of this? I don't know, but they were seen hanging out together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? E- Elon could be the person who's going to finance this this yeah. mockery or be, be his VP choice. Ooh. But it's just a shame, man. Like, <laughs> we're, we're trying to focus on what's actually happening here. Mm-hmm. And this is a disruptor. This is worse than Harambe in 2016. Mm-hmm. Like, wow. people voted for Harambe. Listen, young 18-year-olds who have a chance to vote, this is serious. Do not write Kanye West in. Here we go. Uh, now, joining tomorrow. us now to discuss okay. Kanye, voter engagement and awareness is entrepreneur and founder of Black Folk Must Vote, Ken Smalls. Welcome to the Black Report, Ken. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thank Thank you. you. Now, what are your thoughts about Kanye running for office? (laughs) (laughs) I I, I overheard you talking. I really don't have much, you know, uh, to say about Kanye. I mean, (laughs) um, I heard that when he started to run, and he's mentioned that he was going to run several Mm -hmm. times before, but I just, this most recent run, he also announced that he was coming out with an album. So, yeah. I mean, you can, you can kind of take that with a grain of salt. Right. But um, but as far as Kanye is concerned, I, I, I don't really have much to say about his uh, possible presidency. Yes. Okay, fair and enough. And I agree I with you on that. I don't think it's going to affect anything one way or the other. You know? Okay. All right. Now, do you think they need to raise the criteria to run for president? No, not really. I think us as, um, as the voting public, I think we need to raise our criteria as far as people who we select to, uh, to represent us. Okay. And um, uh, I know you have to, what you said, be a citizen, 35 years of age. Uh, I think you have to get about 10,000 signatures, and I think you have to raise a certain amount of money. Right. Which Capital. Mm-hmm. Capital, right. As far as I'm concerned, that's all they have right now. But um, should there be any other? Th- I, I don't think so, because regular people like you and I should have the ability to run. I just think that the people who vote us in mm-hmm. need to be a little bit more, you know, uh, uh, ed- educated as far as who we're voting for. Okay. Uh, so regardless of who runs, the black vote will be essential. We all know that. Tell us about Black Folk Must Vote. Um, well, Black Folk Must Vote was a um, nonpartisan uh, grassroots um initiative that I started in 2004, just to to get African Americans to vote, uh, register to vote, um, have their voices heard. My goal, um, I guess, to for 2020 was to draw as many African Americans as I could into the election process. I think that um, if we communicate strong messages um, and advocate for access to the ballot, I think that that represents the best opportunity for getting out the vote in black communities and further on for shaping the future of our democracy. And can you tell us where the name came from? Yes, the name um, Black Folk Must Vote um, came from actually um, the civil rights era, specifically um, 1963 Mississippi. It was um, it was the AFL-CIO 
mm-hmm. that in conjunction with the Freedom Democratic Party, they um, wanted to show whites at the time that if given the opportunity to vote, although we got the vote, the right to vote in 1870, um, we weren't actually given the right, uh, the ability to vote mm-hmm. until 1965. And at the time, um, we wanted to show that if we were given that opportunity, we would vote. So they created a mock election. Uh, AFL-CIO, Democratic, uh, Freedom Democratic Party, along with three groups, which some of you may know the names of, the uh, Council of Federated Organizations, uh, the Student Nonviolent uh, Coordinating Committee, and the Congress for Racial Equality. Mm-hmm. And they put together this mock election, and they managed to get 80,000 uh, blacks to come and register to vote mm-hmm. at a time that um, that wasn't very, very easy. Mm-hmm. And uh, to bring these people in, they used the term or the slogan, black folk must vote. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, that's where it came from. Okay. To follow up on that, talk to us about why you're highlighting both the 15th and 19th Amendments of the Constitution. Well, you know, when I, when I first started this in, in 2000. It really wasn't until 2006, 2007, where I got it going. And I wanted to create a a brand of merchandise in which to, um, uh, that that went along with the initiative. And I just thought that, you know, this had to do with voting. And I think I always like to educate. And um, number 15 um, stood for the 15th Amendment which gave African-Americans the right to vote mm-hmm. in 1870. So I put the number 15 on all of the male gear. Mm-hmm. And the number 19 was stood for the 19th Amendment, which was uh, gave the right for women to vote. Yep. Mm-hmm. Women didn't get a right to vote until 50 years later in 1920. So I just used that as a form of, you know, educating um, us that, um, you know, the, these are constitutional rights that we have the ability to, to vote and we need to exercise. Them. I got to ask you this because I talk to people all the time and they say, oh, my vote doesn't matter. But how does black folk must vote plan to engage people to register to vote? Well, this year it's going to be a little difficult because in the past, you know, I spoke at many schools. I spoke at Louisiana State University. I spoke mm-hmm. at Temple. I spoke at this one school in Queens uh, with uh, at-risk kids. Um, now it's going to be difficult to to actually hold uh, events uh, to register voters. So mm-hmm. right now it's just going to be specifically uh, partnerships and social media to get that that vote out. And I've partnered uh, with When We All Vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be doing things with them. I have partnerships, obviously, with um, with you guys, Fox Soul. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get you guys did some some amazing. Uh, post on Instagram and different social media pages on July 4th. I thought that was great. And um, I'm working along with the links. Um, I have having conversations with um, um, some, I don't know if you're familiar with the term, the Divine Nine. These are fraternities. Yes. yes. At the HBCUs, yep. whatnot, Divine mm-hmm. Nine. Yep. Right. Um, I actually worked with uh, Phi Beta Sigma and okay. um, uh, Omega Psi Phi there you go. in uh-huh. 2007. Um, and they this year, one of them called me back, Phi Beta Sigma, and said that they want to do something. So I'm waiting to hear from them. Oh, nice. that's awesome. Wow. Now, where can our soulmates go to learn more about Black Folk Must Vote? Um, well, you can uh, go to my website, um, simple, blackfolkmustvote.org, uh, and um, you can find out you know, how we began, how we started. You can register to vote. You can, um, uh, if you're 13, um, you can... Uh, register on that site, and at 18, we will notify you uh, on your 18th birthday. So wow, there's a lot of ways. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Start them early. Start yeah. them young. And yeah. speaking of uh, oh, yeah. starting them early, how? Because I have family that go to HBCUs. Uh, how would you recommend that we inspire our young uh, students to vote because their votes do matter? Like, right. what, what is? What should we do? What What can we do to help? Oh my God, that's a, that's a really, really tough one. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that the, they're leading um, and inspiring us right, right. now with you know, all of the marches, protests that they're having right now. But um, they're a very difficult demographic. I know myself 
at the same time when I was that age, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't really interested in the, uh, in the voting process. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wasn't until as I got older, I, you know, I used to see my mother and father voting and what have you, but mm-hmm. it didn't really interest me. One, one demographic that I'm very, very concerned about, and I used to speak to them um, when I was out, you know, mm-hmm. and about was people living in um, depressed areas. Mm. Um, I went to speak one time in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and there was a group of kids I had asked. It's election day, and I asked them if they had voted. And they said, no, 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 we didn't vote. Mm. And I asked them why. And their reasoning made sense. They said, we've lived, this was um, Philly. Um, yeah. mm. I think it was North Philly. Mm-hmm. And they have the row houses. And, you know, some of those neighborhoods are pretty bad. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they said, listen, we went through Democratic, we went through Republican administrations, and our situation has not it changed. It has not changed. Mm. Yeah. But- so why is it that I should vote? And I, yeah. you know, I, I spoke with them and... Um, and they understood. I just explained to them. I said, well, listen, I said, I, I was in your area. I, I saw a lot of stores closed. I saw the streets um, had a lot of potholes and what have you in them. Mm-hmm. And I said, I said, what happens is when when it comes time to vote, your elected officials will look to see what particular areas are voting. Mm-hmm. And if your area is not voting, then you're invisible to them. Yeah. They're not oh, wow. going to come into your neighborhoods. Yeah, and true. those things will stay the same unless mm-hmm. They see that there's a reason why they should pay attention to you, there and I, you, you know, I just tried to break it down to him, and I, I, I th- they got it. They understood how to actually convey that mm. to the, the populace. I have, I, I, I wish I knew. I think yeah. that, that that's wow. awesome that you're having conversations with our youth. Make sure you guys follow at Black Vo- uh, Black Folk uh, Must Vote. Thank you so much for joining us on My the Black pleasure. Report, Ken. And be sure to keep us updated about Black Folk yes, Must please. Vote. I think what I you're will. doing is I amazing. Thank I you. love that Thank pendant, you. too, right there. Yes. I want to rock that pendant right there. Yeah. Black <laughs> Folk Must Vote. Yeah, she's yeah. some station. <laughs> <laughs> um,